A standard USB keyboard uses eight bytes of data to encode which keys are being pressed at any point in time. The first byte encodes the modifier keys, so Control, Shift, Alt, Windows key for the right side, as well as the left side of the keyboard. The next byte is always zero, and that leaves this remaining six bytes to encode any other keys that are pressed. And so each, uh, each, each of these six bytes can indicate the key code for a particular key up to six keys. If I press a seventh key, they all go to one, indicating an error. Um, and I have to release some keys, and it'll encode only up to six simultaneous keys. So this limit of being able to only encode six simultaneous key presses is referred to as six key rollover. And perhaps it's a fine limitation for many applications, but for some applications like gaming or um, I guess stenographers who are using multiple simultaneous keystrokes to encode entire words at, at once, being limited to just six bytes here, six simultaneous key presses can be a bit of a problem. Now I'm looking at the electrical signals for the D minus and D plus uh, signals in, inside the USB cable, and this oscilloscope is measuring those and then decoding them into the data here. For more information on how this uh, decoding is done, you can check out, I've got another video where I go into that in quite a bit more detail. But in this video, we're gonna look at why this is limited to six simultaneous keystrokes and what we can do about it and, and what the USB protocol allows us to do about it. As I briefly mentioned in that previous video, when you first plug a USB device in, there's some setup and negotiation that takes place. Uh, the first thing that happens is the device signals whether it's a low-speed device or a high-speed device. If it's a low-speed device, it'll bring the D minus pin high. If it's a high-speed device, it'll bring the D plus pin high, and that tells the computer what speed to start communicating with it uh, with. In this case, uh, this keyboard is a low-speed device, so it's bringing this D minus pin high. Um, and then the computer goes ahead and resets it here, and, and then the computer will, will basically strike up this lengthy conversation where, it, uh, where the keyboard is able to tell it about all of its capabilities and um, all sorts of information. Now, capturing that entire conversation is a bit tricky because you can see if we zoom in here, um, <laughs> the, the data that's decoded is, is, is kind of corrupted here because to sample such a long interval like this, the entire uh, setup conversation, we end up getting fewer samples overall and we aren't able to decode the actual data from it. Um, whereas if we zoom in and are capturing, we can get much more detail about a single packet. So what I want to do is find a way to capture these single packets one at a time so we can see the entire conversation. So for example, if I disconnect this, capture a single capture here and plug it in, the first thing I get is a setup packet. Because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm uh, triggering on a, an acknowledgement packet. So any packet that's sent and acknowledged, the acknowledge is here, we zoom in, we've got our setup, we've got our data, and then we've got the acknowledge. And so I'm triggering on that acknowledge, so I'm getting that acknowledge, but the problem is I can only get one at a time. So to capture the entire conversation when we first plug the keyboard in, what I can do is use this acquire uh, function to do a segmented capture. So we turn this on, what this will do is it'll say capture some number of segments. So I can say capture uh, 100 segments. And if I disconnect this, go into single capture, it's now gonna acquire 100 different segments that are all gonna trigger on that USB acknowledgement. So let's plug this in. It goes ahead and captures all those. And now I've got all these different segments. So if I look at that first segment, we see the setup and data. If I go to the next one, we see uh, some more data. If I go to the next one, I see another setup packet. And we can kind of keep going through these segments that are captured to see the entire negotiation that takes place when the keyboard's first plugged in. So let's start at the top here. So the first thing that actually happens, we zoom in here, is we get a setup packet. And every setup packet is addressed to a particular address and endpoint. And that's what this 00, zero is the address, and then zero is the endpoint. And so by default, when you first plug a USB device in, it doesn't have an address. And so the initial configuration actually takes place using this uh, address zero. And then the data, is going to follow a particular uh, a particular format for, for setup data. And we can actually look in the USB spec for the format of that set of data, setup data. And this describes what, uh, what we're seeing here. So the first byte is the request type. And it uh, has those characteristics of request and it's, a, it's basically a bitmap. So in this case, our first byte is zero. So all of these are zero, which means it's host to device. So the, the host, the computer is talking to the device, the keyboard. 
Um, this is a standard request and the recipient is the, the device, the keyboard. So that's what that first zero zero means. The next byte, five, is the specific request. It says refer to table nine three. Um, the requests are actually listed in table nine four here. So this is a type five, which is set address. And then table nine three, if we go look at that, it shows us what the uh, entire request looks like for set address. So we've got a request type is zero, set address, this is the five that we're getting. And then the next pieces of the request, again, if we go back to what the format of the setup data, we have two bytes for a value, two bytes for an index, two bytes for a length. So our value in this case is the zero C zero zero. Our index is zero 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 and our length is zero 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 zero. And then value, index, and length, all of that sort of varies depending on the particular request. So that's why we go and look at this table here. And so for a set address, that value is the device address. So this 0C00, that's the device address. And these are sort of flipped around. So to, to convert that, <laughs> it's actually 000C. So the device address it's saying is C. And these other two index and length fields, for set address, it just says those are zero. And in fact, those are zero. So what's happening here is, as I mentioned, when the keyboard is first plugged in, it has an address of zero. Well, the first thing the computer does is it actually gives it a different address. And that's what's happening here. This is a set address to address uh, C. And actually, if we go to the computer where this is plugged in and we do uh, ls USB and run this command, it's going to list all of the USB devices that are plugged in. And we can see here it's detected the, the Dell keyboard that we just plugged in. And the device here is device 12. And 12, of course, in hexadecimal is C. So we can see that this first command where it's assigning this address of C to the, the device, um, it actually, actually seemed to have worked. So once the computer sends this command, uh, one thing it's saying is, is the, the last two bytes here is the length of data, um, bytes of, uh, you know, number of bytes to transfer. Well, if we go here, well, it, it's a zero. So if we go to the next thing here, we get an in. Um, trying to read the, the result of that. And here's the data, and there's no, there's no data here. So this is essentially the acknowledgment. If we kind of go over here a little bit, we'll see the acknowledgment. So this is the acknowledgment for that first set address command. So we're setting the address. We're getting the acknowledgment here with, with no data. And then the next thing that happens is another setup packet. But look at this. This setup packet now, the address is 0C. So now the computer is able to talk to the keyboard using that address that it just assigned, 0C. So that's the address. And then the second parameter in the setup packet is the endpoint. And this we're always going to see this as endpoint 0 for the setup stuff. Um, and that refers to the device's de default control path. So all of this setup stuff is happening on endpoint 0. And we'll see, um, actually, once the keyboard is set up and operating, the actual key presses are all happening on endpoint one. But in any event, we're now, we've now got a second setup packet here, and we can interpret this basically the same way, where we just go kind of, we've got eight bytes of data here, and we can look at this same format here for a setup data request and decode what it means. So in this case, the first byte, eight zero, is a little bit different. That first bit is set. So this is device to host. So this is now, we're going to transfer some data from the USB keyboard to the computer. Now, of course, the computer always sends the setup packet. So the computer is sending the setup packet, but the setup packet is, is effectively asking the device, the USB keyboard, to send it some, some data. And the rest of the bits are zero, so the type is standard and the recipient is still the device here. Um, but now the request, the specific request is six. So let's look up what six is. Six is get descriptor. So the computer is sending a get descriptor command to the keyboard. And that sort of makes sense why it was now this device to host, because when the computer is saying get descriptor from the device, from the keyboard, it's expecting the device to return some data to the host. So okay, the computer is saying get descriptor. Um, so now what is this uh, value index in length? What do these next six bytes uh, refer to? Well, if we look at what a get descriptor does, the value is the descriptor type and descriptor index. And the way this is encoded, the descriptor type is one, the index is zero. So what is descriptor type one? Well, we've got a table of descriptor types. Descriptor type one is device. So this is getting the device descriptor for index zero. So the zeroth uh, device descriptor. And then get descriptor, the index is zero or language ID, in this case it's zero. And then the length is one, two which is 
what would that be, 18 in decimal. So it's expecting 18 bytes. So what's going on here is the computer is saying, give me the descriptor or, or essentially the description of the device. Because right, right now we plugged a USB device in, the computer has no idea what it is. It's assigned at an address, it doesn't know anything else. It could be a keyboard, it could be a mouse, it could be a hard drive, it has no idea. So it's asking for the device descriptor, something that describes what the device is. And by the computer putting this length of, of one, two, which is um, in decimal, that's 18 bytes, the computer is saying, I expect the device descriptor to be 18 bytes long. And that's because if you look at what a standard device descriptor looks like, it is in fact, you know, 18 bytes, 18 bytes long. So that's what it's expecting to get back. And if we go and look at the response, what we see is we see some data. So this is in, and then we see eight bytes of data here. And then if we look at the next segment here, we have another eight bytes of data. So we're up to 16 of our 18. And if we look at the next one, we see, mm, where is it? Two more bytes of data. So the request for the device descriptor that's requesting 18 uh, bytes of data takes three packets to send it, two eight byte packets and then a two byte packet. And of course we could go through here and decode this whole thing. So we could look at this, this data that we're starting to get and you know, we see the first byte is the length, the size of the descriptor, which is one, two, or 18 bytes. We see the descriptor type is one, so it's a device descriptor. The next thing we see is the USB spec release number in binary coded decimals. So what, what does that mean? Well, this 1001, you flip that around and then you interpret it as it's described here. And basically what that says is this, this USB keyboard supports USB version 1.1 which is a fairly old version of USB, but it's, you know, it's a low speed device. So no surprise there. So that's what's encoded there. And then we've got our class, subclass, all sorts of other stuff that are described in here. And we can, we can decode all of this using the oscilloscope, but I think an easier way to decode all of this because there's, this conversation goes on for quite a while. There's a whole bunch of information that the keyboard is sending to the computer. And a much easier way to interpret this rather than scrolling through these waveforms is if we go to, there's a lister here that will show, it'll scan through all those segments and decode all of that data. And we can either scroll through the data here and, and read the same, the same data that we were just looking at, or I could put a USB drive in here and save this data. So we're gonna save lister data to USB file name, sure, whatever. Uh, press to save. So we'll go ahead and hit that. And that'll save all this data onto this USB drive. And we can now pull this data up on the computer where it might be easier to look at. So once we export that data, it gives us a CSV file, which we can look at here. And this is what it looks like. And you can see it's the same data we had before. So here's that setup packet that's setting uh, the address to zero C. And then here's the setup packet to address zero C that's getting the device descriptor. Here's the response coming in. Um, and so on and so on. This conversation just sort of goes on and on and on. There's all sorts of information that's uh, being sent by the keyboard until we eventually get down to this point here where the keyboard is just operating. And here you see the in uh, command going to address zero C, the, the address of the keyboard. This time it's endpoint one, and that's what's getting the actual uh, report of which keys are pressed. And so I think while I was capturing this, I wasn't pressing any keys. So you see all these are just zeros. But if we were pressing keys, we would see that. But if we scroll back up, um, this is all of the negotiation that goes on ahead of time to get that set up. So what I'm gonna do is create a filter here to make this a little bit simpler to look at just what we care about. And we just care about the data and setup. If we just look at those, that should make this a little bit simpler. And so here we go. We can see our setup. This is our setup command. And in the, for the first one, there's no response. Uh, for the second one, here's our setup command and one, two is the length, so that's uh, in decimal 18 uh, byte response, and then here's that 18 byte response. And so it just kind of keeps going. Here's the next setup command. It's expecting a two byte response. There's the two byte response. The next setup command is expecting, uh, uh, what is that, two, four in hex would be uh, 30, 36 bytes um, in decimal, so there's the response for that. Um, and this, you know, just sort of goes on and on and on. Um, you know, here's a whole bunch of stuff that it's sending until we finally get to this port here where it's just uh, replying with the, the reports of what keys are pressed. So this is the whole negotiation here to get the keyboard set up. So the question now is, what does it all mean? 
Well, to make sense of it, we can start by decoding each of the setup data packets because they all follow the same basic format. There's the characteristics of request, so uh, direction and type and all that stuff. That's the first byte. And then the second byte is going to be the specific request. And then there's two bytes for value, two bytes for index, two bytes for length. And so I've kind of broken that out. So these are all the various requests that are coming in uh, that we captured. And I've broken it out into that characteristics, the, the request, and then the value index and, and length there. And then I've used the, the USB spec to just go ahead and, and decode what those actually mean. So we could see in the spec that the, you know, uh, five is gonna be set address, so I can just decode that there, or six is get descriptor. So I've got all that decoded here. And then depending on what the request is, we might get some, some data back uh, from the keyboard, or we might be sending data from the computer. And so I've also sort of broken out what that data is, and depending on the particular type of data, so in this case, this is a, a, a get descriptor for a device, so the response is gonna be a device descriptor. And so the USB spec you know, tells you what format a device descriptor is and what all the different data means. So I've gone ahead and decoded that as well based on the USB spec. So I've got this whole thing sort of decoded here and we can, we can go through step by step and see the entire conversation that the, that the keyboard and the computer have before, uh, before the keyboard actually starts working. And I won't go through it in excruciating detail, but I'll just try to kind of go through and hit some of the highlights. So as we saw, the first thing it does is it does the set address to give it an address and then get descriptor to get the device descriptor. And so the device descriptor has you know, some stuff in it. It's got the USB version that the keyboard supports. Um, it's got the max packet size is eight and that's for the, the control channel. So you know, if you saw all these packets that we're getting are eight bytes, that's, that's, that's why. We've got a vendor ID and product ID that are, that are sent to the computer um, as well as a version number for the keyboard. And then it's got the, these, these string indexes. So it's the manufacturer description, product description, and product serial number. And it's saying that those are stored in these different strings. So string one, string two, or string zero. And then it says there's one possible configuration. But the strings are kind of interesting because what that's saying is that the product description, for example, is in string two. And the computer, actually, that's the next thing it does is it gets string two. So it's doing get descriptor, which is six. But instead of the descriptor type being one for device, remember if we look at the spec, um, descriptor type one is a device, it's getting descriptor type three, which is for a string. So descriptor type three is a string, and then the index is two to get string number two, which the device descriptor said corresponds to the product description. So it's getting that string two that corresponds to the product description. There's a field in here for which language it wants, and there's a whole other spec where you can <laughs> figure out what all those languages are. And then it's saying that it's expecting a response length of two bytes. And so in fact, it receives two bytes. But the format of this response is, is defined such that the first byte indicates how long the string is. So here it's saying the string is actually two four uh, bytes long, or if we convert that to decimal, that's 36 bytes. So it's saying this, the string is actually 36 bytes long. And then the second byte here just tells us what type of descriptor, it's type three, which is a string, it's just confirming that. So the computer is going to all the trouble of getting string two and it's, it's not actually getting anything, it's just getting the length. Because then what it can do is it can do the same thing. It's a get descriptor, string two, but now it can say, ah, now I'm expecting the, the full 36 bytes and now the response is going to be those first two bytes plus the rest of the bytes that are actually the string. And this is all uh, UTF-16 encoded, so if we decode that, then what it spells out is Dell USB keyboard, which is a description of the device. And so this is actually is actually pretty interesting. So is we, we, as soon as we plug the keyboard in, or, or any USB device in, the first thing it does is it gets this uh, device descriptor, which tells it where to find the product description, and then it gets the product description. So the computer has, at this point, has no idea what this device is. We just plugged some USB device in. It could be a hard drive. It could be a webcam. It has no idea. But what it does know is it knows this, you know, human readable string that describes it. So if the computer has any problems, you know, configuring this or dealing with it, or there's any errors, then it can give us an error message saying, hey, there's an error with your Dell USB keyboard. And even though the computer doesn't actually know that it's a keyboard, it can at least give us that message. So if you've ever had that experience of plugging some USB device in and it doesn't work, but the computer like quote unquote recognizes it and tells you what it is, the computer may not actually really know very much at all about it at this point. So anyway, I thought that's kind of interesting. Um, the next thing it does is it gets another string. In this case, it's string number one. It does the same thing where it's getting two bytes to just to find out how long it is. And then it gets it with the correct length. Um, in this case, it the string spells out Dell. And that's for string one, which we saw up here. String one is the manufacturer. So it also gets the manufacturer. So it knows that it's uh, manufactured by Dell and that it is a Dell USB keyboard. But again, the computer can't really do anything with that information other than just show the user. 
But it's interesting that it does that first before it goes on to get the actual configuration, which this is actually going to be information the computer can make sense of. And so there's another get descriptor command. It says get descriptor for configuration type, which is two, type two, configuration zero. Um, there is only one configuration that was in the device descriptor, told us that. And it's expecting it to be a, a length of nine. And if we look at the uh, format of a configuration descriptor, it is nine bytes long. And it's all described here in the spec. And I've interpreted the spec to, to figure out what this particular configuration descriptor says. And again, I won't get uh, too into the details here, but one thing that's interesting is there's a nine byte uh, configuration descriptor, which is sort of a USB standard thing. But then the USB device can have other configuration data. And so part of the configuration descriptor is to tell uh, the computer the total length of all configuration data. And so that's what this field here is. And it says that that length is uh, 2, 2 in hex. And basically what happens is the computer then does another get descriptor for that configuration, just you know, the same, same command again, just kind of like we saw with the strings. But instead of saying, give me nine bytes, it says, give me two, two bytes, because it knows now that that's how much configuration data there is. And now it gets all this data describing um, all kinds of other things. And so the first nine bytes are the same. That's our configuration descriptor. But then we get an interface descriptor, an HID descriptor, and an endpoint descriptor. And all of this has the effect of describing to the computer that the keyboard is a um, what's called an HID device, or human interface device, device that has one endpoint. And human interface devices are a whole other thing that uh, has got it's got its own spec. And I've got some of the pieces of that spec that I needed in order to decipher this uh, printed out here. Uh, but a human interface device is you know something that a human uses to interface with a computer, so a keyboard or a tablet or a mouse or a game controller, all kinds of things like that. So this configuration is describing to the computer that this is um, a human interface device, and, it's, and it has a, an endpoint. It has one endpoint that's polled every 18 milliseconds. And that, that endpoint is, uh, well, it's endpoint number one, which is sort of interesting, because if we look at the oscilloscope here, when we're just polling the, the keyboard, and we press various keys um, and look at this, at this response here, we're receiving on endpoint one. That's what this one here uh, indicates. And so what the configuration is describing is it's describing that endpoint as endpoint number one. And, it's, and then it's pulled every 18 milliseconds, which is you know, kind of what, what we're seeing here. And when we pull it, what we're getting here is this eight bytes of data that you know, we saw before. It has you know, the list of keys that I'm pressing or that first byte that corresponds with the modifier keys if I'm pressing any of those. Uh, this uh, eight byte response here is referred to as a report because I guess it's reporting um, you know, data from, from the keyboard. And so if we look in this configuration uh, data here, in the HID descriptor, it says there's one HID class descriptor, and that class descriptor type is report. So this is saying that there, there is a report descriptor, and that descriptor length is 4.1. And you'll see later on where we actually get that. Um, but this is kind of uh, the, the first step there to say that, that somewhere in, in all this data that we're going to get from the keyboard is a description of this report. Uh, and that's going to be very interesting to take a look at. Next thing we see here is a command that's sent from the host to device to set configuration um, and then a configuration one. So, you know, we got this configuration up here. Uh, we, we know this is the only configuration. And so I guess the spec says you've got to specify which configuration you want. Seems a little bit unnecessary since there's only one of them, but anyhow, we, we set that there. Next, we see a command, um, the set feature instruction. And the particular feature that's being set is device remote wake up. And this is a USB feature that uh, you know gives the ability. So if if, a, if the computer goes to sleep or goes into power save mode or whatever, some USB devices have the ability to wake the computer up. And so this is setting that feature on the keyboard because the keyboard has that capability. So for example, if your computer goes into power save mode, you want to be able to press a key in order to get it out of power save mode. And so this is just uh, the host acknowledging uh, or setting the keyboard to to sort of enable that functionality. But now that that's set up. This next command here is the interesting one. So the first thing that's interesting about this is the uh, initial request type here is different than everything we've seen so far. So far, we've either seen things that are host to device where the computer is sending an instruction to the keyboard. So for example, here, this set feature that was host to device, or it's been device to host where the computer's requesting something like it's getting one of those strings or it's getting the device descriptor or whatever. But here, that bit is still set. So it's device to host so it is getting information from the keyboard, but that last bit is also set. So instead of device, it's now referring to the interface. So it's not getting information from the device, 
it's getting information from the interface. And the interface here, uh, we're actually sort of stepping outside of the, the base USB spec and into the, uh, the HID spec, the human interface device spec. And this is where we're getting that report. So we're getting a report descriptor. And this, this report descriptor thing, that's defined in this HID spec. And we're getting re report descriptor zero for interface zero. And we're expecting a response length of 41 hex. And that 41 comes from our, you know, when we got our configuration before, we had this HID class descriptor um, with a report descriptor, descriptor length 41. So this is going to be the report descriptor. And remember, the report is, is this, is, is this data that we get from the keyboard that reports which keys are pressed. So that's very interesting. This is the descriptor for that. So this, that means this is describing what that data, uh, what that data format is. So this is going to break out in excruciating detail what data the keyboard sends us on every report. And all of these codes are defined in the HID spec various places. So for example, the very first thing that it does, if I can find it in here, is this usage page. So you can see 05 is going to be this code here. So it's 0000, 0101 um, is the prefix. And then the, the, the final 01 indicates that there's one byte following. In that case, the one byte is a 1. And that 1 is going to be uh, specify the current usage page. And to find that, there's this whole set of HID usage tables that list various usage pages and other things. And so usage page one is generic desktop. And then if we get into generic desktop, there's all kinds of different things defined there as well. So once we're into usage page one, the next command is usage six. And so we see here usage six is keyboard. And then once we get into usage keyboard, um, there's a sort of grouping collection uh, that we start here, and then there's end collection down at the end. And then everything in here is sort of considered a collection, which I'm not sure is all that significant for what we're looking at here. But the next thing it does is it switches usage page again to usage page 7. And so usage page 7 is the keyboard keypad page. So now if we look at the keyboard keypad page, that's this uh, page here. And it has all these various usage IDs. And if we actually look at what these are, each of these IDs corresponds to characters. And actually, as it turns out, these are the same codes that get sent when we press a key. So if I press, uh, I don't know, keyboard end is 4D. So if I press the end key on my keyboard, sure enough, there's a 4D that shows up. Um, so that's you know, where all that's defined in terms of, you know, where in the spec it's defined, it's this keyboard keypad page. Um, all of those IDs are defined. But anyway, once we specify that we're, you know, looking at this keyboard keypad page, there's um, a, a series of other sort of commands that are sent in here. There's this local usage, minimum, maximum, log local, logical minimum, logical maximum, report size, report count, and so on. And all of those, again, are defined in the HID spec. So if you dig through this HID spec, there's... Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, here we go. There's, there's logical minimum, logical maximum. All of these things are defined. And so anyway, I've sorted all this stuff out and and decoded it all. And this is this is basically what I've come up with here. And so I'll just sort of describe what's going on here. This local uh, or usage minimum and usage maximum E0 and E7 that refers back to this keyboard keypad page. And if we look up what uh, E0 and E7 are. We get over here, E0 is keyboard left control. So that's the, the control key on the left side of the keyboard. And then E7 is keyboard right GUI, and GUI is the, the Windows key. I think that's what the note here, yeah, Windows key, or it could be the option key on a Mac or whatever. So E0 through E7 is, you know, left control, left shift, left alt, left Windows key, right control, right shift, right alt, right Windows key. So it's, it's those modifier keys. OK, so it's saying there's a minimum maximum of, of those modifier keys. There's, there's eight of them. And we're putting together a bunch of reports. Um, so, so we'll go ahead here and say, so report size is one bit. And then there's eight reports. So what this is basically doing is it's mapping these, uh, you know, these, these usages, uh, as, the, as the spec calls them, of these different keys. It's mapping them into um, eight one-bit reports 
where each report is either going to be a zero or a one, depending on whether it's pressed or not. So in other words, this is this is defining this first this first bit, um, so this or this first byte rather, of the report, is and it's saying that it is these modifier keys, and they're mapped. Each modifier key, each of the eight modifier keys, is mapped to one bit, and then this last thing here, input, is saying that everything that we've we've sort of put together up up until this point, we're going to create an input from that, and that input will be a variable, and so that's what's defining that first byte in the report. So after we've defined that, now we get report count one, report size eight bits, and now this is input constant. So constant as opposed to variable, this is just a, a one instead of a two there. Constant means it doesn't change. And so that's defining this second byte here. And remember, I've said the second byte is always zero. I don't know why it's always zero, but it's always zero. And here is the, is the report descriptor saying that this is a constant. Next, we've got a couple things here that are um, maybe a little bit out of order. I'm going to skip these next two sections just for now and get to this last section here, which is report count six. So that six means that there are six reports, and this eight means that each report is eight bits. Well, that, of course, refers to the following, uh, the remaining six, bit, uh, six bytes here. So each of these eight-bit things is a report, and there are six of them. Um, so that makes, that makes sense. And now this is saying this logical minimum, logical maximum um, is zero through FF which makes sense, they're eight bits, so it's gonna be zero through you know, 255. And then it's going back to usage page seven, which again is this keyboard keypad uh, page. And then it's saying the logical usage minimum is zero and the logical usage maximum is FF. So it's just mapping from zero through FF, all of the different keys that are defined on this keyboard keypad page uh, usage page. And then our input command here that's, that's defining an input is, is using type zero, which is an array. And so this section here is defining those last six bytes. And it's just saying that those six bytes correspond, you know, basically one for one to the, to the key, um, key codes that are defined in the spec. And that's, yeah, that's what we see. That's the behavior we see. And so this description is describing this input. It's saying we have eight one-bit reports. That's one input. Then we have eight bits of constant. That's nothing. And then we have six reports that are eight bits each as an array. And those are our inputs. So we see input, input, and input. So that describes the, the input from the keyboard that we're seeing here. Now, what about these other sections here, these output sections? Well, this suggests that there's also an ability to send output to the keyboard. And in fact, there is. You know, so if we're looking at what's going on in the scope now, we're receiving data from the keyboard. Um, but that's because we're sending, or the computer is sending an in command to uh, to the keyboard at endpoint one, and it's receiving this six or this eight byte report back. But if the computer sent an out command, it could also send data to the keyboard, and the format of that data is described by any of these sort of output things here. So let's take a look at that. So here we have uh, three reports, one bit each, from usage page eight. So what is usage page eight? Well, usage page eight is the LED page. And if we look at what the, the minimum and maximum is one through three, so one is num lock, two is caps lock, three is scroll lock. So those correspond to the three LEDs that you would see on a keyboard. And <laughs> all sorts of other LEDs that you could, I guess, potentially have. It's kind of crazy um, in the spec, but in any event, this keyboard supports three LEDs and it just maps them one bit each into three reports. And it says that's output. And then we've got one report of five bits that is constant. And I think what that's doing is it's just saying, well, we've got three bits corresponding to the three LEDs, and we're just gonna have five bits that are zero, so that gives us eight bits total. So that if you wanted to set the LEDs, you would send an out command to the keyboard, and then data would just be one byte, and only three of those bits in that byte are used to set the LEDs. So this is describing, describing that. And all this data, remember, is coming from the keyboard. So the keyboard is telling us, this is how I communicate. And it's up to the computer to, to sort of understand and, and adhere to this. So once the, the keyboard sends this, the, um, the computer sends a couple other commands. It sends a, a set idle, which is a, an HID specific command that says that if, if nothing changes on the keyboard for 24 milliseconds, don't send a report. And then set protocol to the report protocol, um, which is just basically saying, you know, use, use this report protocol. And then the last command that is sent before we start receiving keys is 
a set report to interface zero and it's one byte and it's that one byte is zero, which I believe what this is doing is it's setting all the LEDs to off. So when we first plug the keyboard in, in case they were in some other state, the computer's setting them all off. And that's it, that's that whole conversation when we first plug the keyboard in. So back to that question of how we could support more than six keys being pressed at the same time. Well, if we look at that report descriptor, um, you can probably imagine a few things that we could change in here. One, for example, is change this from six reports to something more than six. <laughs> Uh, and we could presumably support however many key presses we wanted to. But hopefully it makes sense to you that this format gives us enough flexibility to design a keyboard that, that does support you know, true end key rollover. The next step, of course, would be to take a look at an actual keyboard that claims to support end key rollover and see how it actually works. And so I've got one here, and that's what I'm going to do in the next video, because it actually turns out that this uh, is a bit more complicated than I expected to get it to uh, reveal its secrets. But in the next video, I'll show how this keyboard actually supports N key rollover. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss that. And of course, as always, I want to thank all my patrons who help make these videos possible. You can join them over on Patreon and let me know what other types of videos you'd like to see. And of course, check out my website, eater.net, where I've got all my videos cataloged, as well as various projects and things.